This week we are in part two of Be Generous Always, and we're honing in on this idea of discontentment. And this is an incredibly important topic for, I think, all of us, because so many of us, this idea of discontentment is the root cause of what drives a lot of our poor financial decision making. It causes us to buy things we don't want and to spend money we don't have. And that in turn causes us to not be able to be the generous people that I believe we all want to be. I've never met someone that says, you know what, I really just don't want to be a generous person. But things get in the way and this discontentment is a big piece of the pie. Uh, discontentment is fueled uh, big time in our culture by two things I feel like primarily. The, the first being uh, this consumeristic culture we live in. You can have something on your doorstep with a push of a button and we are getting advertisements on the thousands daily. People are clamoring for your attention, trying to get you to purchase things that you really don't need. And then the second piece is comparison. When we look around at other people and they say, well, they've got that, so I should have it too, and I work hard and I deserve this, it causes us to make decisions that we probably wouldn't make otherwise. We talked about this week, this idea that rich or poor, we all want more. This idea of discontentment drives uh, a lot of things for a lot of us. This is not, not anyone's immune, no matter what your income level is. Mark Pat put it this way this week too. He said, more stuff is never enough. We can always be discontent. We can always want more, but that's not the life God had in store for us. And so this week we dove into Luke chapter 12, where Jesus tells a couple of stories on both sides of the spectrum. What happens when you have more than enough and what happens when you're worried you don't have enough? And he tells a story about a farmer who had a really good year, had so many crops. He thought to himself and he made plans to himself and he was all about himself, me, me, me. And he said, I'm going to tear down my barns and I'm going to build bigger ones. I'm going to put all my stuff in there and then I'm just going to take life easy. And there was no consideration for anyone else. No thought of sharing, no thought of generosity. And God's response to him was very harsh. He said, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. And that's a really harsh response when we read it, but that's how much God wants your heart. He wants first place in your life. And love demands a harsh response sometimes because God doesn't want us to put goods in his rightful place. We can't put goods in the place of God. We can't put stuff in the place of a savior. And so God says, like, it's not just about you. And he says, it's also not just about now, you got to think about the future, that there is a world beyond this own. Are you going to take this stuff with you? No, you can't. And then he moves on and he talks to those people that maybe said, I need more because I don't have enough. I'm, I'm on hard times. And he says, you know what, you guys, you're going to start to worry and I don't want you to worry. I'm going to take care of you just like I take care of the birds, like they're a part of my creation, but you are the, like the prize of all my creation. I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry. I know what you need. And then he wraps it up by saying, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your treasure? Where do you want to be? Are you more concerned with what you are uh, getting next? Or are you more concerned with what you will be giving next? And we laid out a challenge this week. Give something away. Not something that is junk to you. Something that is actually treasure to you. Something that you value, but you know that someone else might want it more. Or they might use it more. And when you do that, you get a little glimpse of what it's like to be in God's kingdom, a generous kingdom, one where we're willing to share anything and everything because we know it's not all about us and we know that this life is not the end. We're going to store things up that are eternal. Those things are best shared and they last forever. So this week, we're going to be generous always, church. So let's go and be the church.